All right, so coming up on cheap versus expensive today, I'm gonna to check out bike racks. Now, ever since I got a bicycle, I have never, ever, 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 ever used a bike rack. I simply take the front wheel out and then just wedge it in the car, whether that means having to take everything out or just take the front wheel out, take the back wheel out, somehow just cram the bike in. That's what I normally do. However, having two kids now, I just can't be bothered to unpack all the kids' stuff when it comes to taking my bike somewhere. When you have two kids and you've got Isofixers in, if you have an Isofix in your car, you'll know what it's like to try and get one of those out. It's an absolute nightmare to get in and out all the time, to be able to put your seats down, to put your bike in. And I can't be bothered with that hassle anymore. So today I'm gonna to be looking at a cheap version of a bike rack and an expensive version of the bike rack. And these are the two I'm looking at. So on the right hand side here, we have the Talent Sea Sucker. Go on to Sea Sucker's website. This retails for $299 in the UK. Well, technically that, I think the exchange around that is about 240-ish, 240 pounds. But um, if you look online on UK websites, they're retailing for about 280, 290, something like that. And on the left hand side here is the Saris one solo. I don't know. It's it's basically it's from Halfords and it cost me 32 pounds. And it's a one bike carrier that straps onto the back of the car. So now I'm gonna take these two outside and I'm gonna see how quickly I can get them fitted. Firstly, we'll go with this one. So one one thing I want in a in a carrier is efficiency. How efficient is this at being put on? How efficient am I at putting this on? Right, instructions, they look pretty simple. Sedan, hatchback, SUV, I guess this is a hatchback, right? Right. These instructions are useless. Let's take it for a test. All right, so first maiden voyage with the 32 pound rack. I've got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm always nervous when, uh, whenever there's a bike on a rack on a car. My brother had a rack, oh, over speed bumps. Good test, I guess. Uh, my brother had a, ra um, a rack and he'd not put it on right. He'd gone to France and he was driving back from France and the bikes fell off on the motorway so I'm always a bit wary last speed bump all right so the rack seems to be good hopefully the GoPro is still on there as well so the rack was relatively easy to fit it required like four little hooks to go over the top of the boot and under the boot uh, I'm not too happy on them being metal there's no like they've got a little bit of I don't know, like a plastic coating on them, but it's not really rubberized or soft, so that worries me a little bit. But a big advantage with this rack is that I can actually see it in my rear view mirror at all times. I'm not worried about going through a drive through and um, I'm walloping one of those height restriction bars that you see. Yeah, that's it in that, so you've got to be wary of that. I'll put it back down there and we'll see. We'll see if that moot works its way back up and hits that. Um, on this side, the wheel can, so the wheel can move and when the wind catches it, it can hit the, the boot. It's a rubber tyre, but is it going to mark it if it's on a long journey and it's just hitting it? Maybe. Pretty rigid. 
pretty rigid. All right, so sticking in the speed limit, let's take it around these, these little bends here, sticking in the speed limit, just to produce some, just some lateral force against it. All right then, so rather than speed this up and do some sort of time lapse to, to find out how long it takes to fit this, I kind of know how long it takes to fit this, I've, I've already fitted it. Um, so start, start the clock now, Pritch. And so before we actually start fitting it, what I'm going to do is just give this top of the car a bit of a, uh, a clean. We don't want any dirt or dust under the, the sea sucker. And I think I'm going to try and put it on the window back here this time and I'll tell you why in a second. All right, so that's that's clean now. So just make sure the uh, make sure the seat sucker's clean as well. These these normally do come with covers, but the boys in the office they didn't send them down. So first off, we put it here. Place it anywhere on on the roof I guess um, and it's easy just press it down see these little buttons here press it in and start sucking it in creates a vacuum and then it starts sucking the air out same with this one same with that one and then you've got three points of contact there and then you just keep pressing them in without in your roof until the orange disappears and then you're going to take your front wheel out this is where this differs from the other one because the other one you don't need to take your wheel out you're going to place it without catching the paint without catching the paint Pritchard I said There we go. That's where it's going to go. So you can loosely fit that in there. It doesn't have to be fully tight just yet. As long as it's not going to fall out, perfect. I'm going to take the rear sea sucker. Just make sure that's clean. And then the reason I've done it here and I've put it on the window is so I can actually see it because one thing that bothers me on these sea suckers is the fact that when it's on the top of the roof here so if the back was here and the front was here you can't see it and sometimes you forget that it's up there so with the back one same again pump it up all the way you get a velcro strap to go over one more check I don't know how long that's taken me right but that is quicker than the other one. Now with the sea sucker it comes with a velcro strap that goes around here and one of the reasons you put it on the left hand side of your car is if it's on the right hand side that's your chain and uh, groups that side and it's going to get dirty so I'm using one of these little tie wraps here just to hold that crank arm in place because if you don't hold it in place do you know what happens? It marks your paint so that's going to hold that crank in place so it's not going to go anywhere. Bike still isn't tight that's my fault. So go back to the front, just tighten this quick release up. Now it's too tight for a charge, well done. Tight. 
that's going nowhere that sea sucker is going absolutely nowhere if I, if I was strong enough I reckon I could pick my car up with this job done right it's time to test ride with the uh, sea sucker so in terms of fitting it you can see just how much quicker it is to fit a sea sucker than it is to fit the other one it's 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 night and day and i dare say there isn't anything on the market anything that can be fitted that quickly to any vehicle like you don't have to rock up and say hello can i have a sea sucker for a 1999 citroen picasso please the one with the concave roof i don't know or a 1983 Mazda 323. You can just get a sea sucker and you know it's gonna fit. So that's kind of handy. That can, it's universal across all, across all car ranges, across vans, across pretty, pretty much anything that, that has a flat roof, I guess, you can, you can put it on. That being said, the, uh, the cheap version does also accommodate various different cars but it is only cars, so you couldn't put a uh, one of the. Why has he not got no top on? It's 13 degrees. Pleasure, darling. He's got no top on, and it's 30 degrees. So let's take a look at it and uh, and see how secure it is. Is it? Is it? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it's still there. So you can see the one thing with the sea sucker, I've not really lined it up very well, so it, it doesn't look very level. So I bet when people see that they're like, oh, that doesn't look very straight, but still solid here. Going nowhere. Such a simple design. Going nowhere. So you can see here, look, see where it where the metal flexes. I think because of the suction of these, that when you go over a bump sometimes it it makes that noise but it's safe it's not going to dent it it's not going to dent it at all but yeah still solid still solid as a rock so as long as you fit it right you shouldn't have an issue right then so same with the other car just going to go around these s bends within the speed limit just to see if it forces it to come off Alright, to see just how easy it is to get these sea suckers off and to get your bike off, all you got to do, undo this velcro right here, go to the front, undo that quick release lever, and it should just, uh, quick unscrew and it should just pop, go on Pritch, go on you can do it, unscrew it a little bit more, it's not that, it's, it's you, it's your muscles, go on pull, there you go, bike comes off, easy as that, wheel goes in, sea sucker off, just like this, oosh, pops them straight off, no effort, needed at all press the two tabs together and off it comes get ready for this one here watch watch that orange just pop out press pop next one press them together pop no effort needed whatsoever sea sucker in boot boot down wheel in off you go all right so conclusion time this video's gone on way longer than i thought i just can't make a video nice and compact it needs to be it's, anyway summary We've got the Sea Sucker and we've got the Sarius One Bike Carrier, two um, ends of the bike carrier spectrum. I guess on cheap versus expensive, what I want to do is, every time I do it, I want to say, don't waste your money on the expensive product because this, this one does the job just as good. And they both do the same job, but really, ultimately, they're both in a different, they're in a totally different category of, of, of bike carrier. Um, see, the Sea Sucker isn't, it isn't your run-of-the-mill bike carrier, right? This is this is for the for the for the cyclist who owns you know like the the seven eight grand bike who owns the flash car who wants to look cool, right? Whereas this this is just for the everyday man who is who's got kids who's got no spare cash. 
and needs a bike carrier uh, and it'll do the job it'll do the job fine but I want to look cool I've, I've spent you know a lot of money on my bike it's a small price to pay for a for a, a cool gadget that sits at the top of my car that looks cool that does the job really really well um, and looks flash and plus the good thing with this is it's, it takes up hardly any space so once you've once you've got to where you're going take it off chuck it in the boot and it's fine you've not got like this massive rack um, sticking out of your car you, you haven't got to worry about the size of this thing going in the boot I mean it's not that it's not massive but it's certainly going to take up a lot more space than the sea sucker this is the motto of cheap versus expensive and it's what's your budget that's it top and bottom because between this and this there's a million and one different things um however if you look at the cheap end and you don't have a great deal of money to spend you can still get something that's going to do the job but if you've got a bit of disposable income you've just spent you know five or six grand on a brand new bike and you want to look the part then you go for this Thanks for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you leave them comments down below. Give me a suggestion for your favorite bike rack because although I'm always going from one end of the spectrum to the other, right in the middle of all this is, is a, a huge glut of different bike racks. And you might have got one that you absolutely love that's easy to install, that's easy to use, that's small, lightweight, compact. Um, and just let us know down below. Let the community know where we should be going for bike racks. But out of these two, which one would you have? Like, subscribe, notification bell.